basically the NFL adopting a modified version of the XFL's kickoff. What do you think of this? Because obviously more kickoff returns with lower injury risk. You returned plenty of kicks in college. Your dad, by the way, had some pretty nice kickoff returns for the Bucks. How do you feel about this? Yeah, I mean, if it does what it's supposed to do and it helps guys not get hurt, then I think that it's a good thing. Um, I haven't really <laughs> done much special teams, yeah. so I don't really know how it's going to affect everybody like at the pro level and, and if it's going to create jobs or if it's going to diminish jobs. Like, I mean, like, I guess we're all just going to find out. But I feel like what if, it, what if it, there's a touchdown scored? At, at the beginning of every game, what, that's not going to change your job a little bit. Well, I mean, I mean, it definitely would because because it puts pressure on you mm -hmm. if like the other team scores first play, and then if we score, then we don't get on the field now, and <laughs> then like and then now I have to sit on the bench for another four minutes. So um, it can be good and bad, but but you know it's a team sport, and um, and football is constantly adapting. So. This is just one of those adaptations that uh, we're going to have to get used to. Michael, it doesn't feel like you're excited about it. Are you excited about the new hybrid kickoff rule? Am I excited about it? I mean, I, I think it's interesting. <laughs> you're like me, because I'm like, okay, I guess we'll talk about this. But everyone's like, <gasps> breaking news, da, da, da. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think a better guy on my team to ask would be yes. – Zaire Franklin or EJ Speed, because those guys came up doing that, and uh, they probably have a way stronger. Yeah, me. I only bring you on not to talk like about. I said, like I haven't had a lot of. Opportunity. Yeah, I don't bring you on to talk about kickoff, of course. I bring you on to talk about farming. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Because okay. last time I talked to you, you told me that you and your beautiful wife purchased 42 mm -hmm. acres of land. There were some cows on your Instagram story. I was like, what am I looking at here? The other day mm -hmm. you posted this video with you moving and stacking 5,200 pounds of hay. Michael, did you not just get $67 million? Are you doing being rich wrong? What is happening here? Well, I mean, like, I don't think there's a, a, a right way of, of doing so-called... <laughs> I mean, I actually don't even like those terms, but um, we've been financially blessed with um, everything that's happened lately. But this is just what we like to do. Um, my wife has had horses since she was a kid, and I've always liked the outdoors and doing things outdoors. And um, actually, the first, because everybody asks me, like, what's the first thing that I bought? The yeah. first thing that I bought is landscaping because my <laughs> lawn looks terrible. So I got to fix it. I have a lot of grass and it looks terrible. So that's the first thing I bought was grass seed. It's the old, the most old man um, dad answer I've ever heard. I'm fixing my lawn. I'm working on the landscaping, but I'm, I'm happy. I mean, if it makes you happy, I'm happy for That looks like no fun to me, but I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And hey, congratulations on the deal. Thank you. Thank you. And it's been a whirlwind of an offseason for you. You get hit with the tag. You get the three-year extension with the Colts right at the start of free agency. So it's over and you can work on your hay because you made your hay. Um, did you know this was going to get done throughout the process? Or was there a weird, was there any moment of drama or uncertainty? No, it, um, it was pretty streamlined. And um, when I got hit with the tag, like, they, they told me that that was going to happen. And that was just part of the process because we needed more time to talk, but there was no doubt that I was going to be a Colt, um, that everything was, was kind of going the way that I thought it would go. Um, and, and, and we're here and, and I'm still a Colt and I'm excited about it and I can't wait. I've actually been texting Anthony like at least like four or five times a week. Like I'll just send him like random texts, like just like to let him know that like I'm thinking about him or like, just like check on him or just send him random, just, funny text, like just to get him thinking. How is he? I had Darius Butler on last week and I told him, obviously he's plugged into that community. I'm like, nobody's talking about Anthony Richardson and I think he's going to be like the post-hype explosive candidate that takes 2024 by force. I really do. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony is doing great. I just seen uh, reports saying that he's ready for our um, spring camp spring training or what spring training is college football he's, he's ready for otas sorry um and i can say that because that's <laughs> public because like just that's public and then it's put out there because i don't want to give up too much information gotcha. but so uh they said that he's ready and i'm just excited for him and 
he's had basically a whole year to watch everyone else play. Uh, you know, like he's seen Bryce, he's seen CJ, he saw Will. So just like being able to see those guys, like I know that he's hungry to show what he can do. Everybody I've talked to in that building, players, personnel alike, front office even, that he's he's a leader, that he really wants to be the best. Is this the kind of guy, once he's perfectly healthy and ready to go, is he calling you saying like, when can I come to the farm? Let's get some routes in. Let's like, is he the kind of guy who's gonna organize, you know, a trip for this receiving core? Like what what is he made of in, in, as he looks forward to a healthy year? Absolutely. Um, I've been, so I got him to the farm once last year and, and I've been trying to get him back. Um, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of scared a couple of my teammates, like with my uh, cows, I actually got them in the pen and then the cows kind of like, like they didn't chase them, oh but my God. they were galloping towards them and they all got scared. Which players, which players got scared? It was the receivers and the quarterbacks, and they all started scattering like they were being attacked by, like, monsters or something. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we we definitely have something planned that uh, we're going to do. We don't know the um, location yet. Of course, I want to get them out to California, but at the end of the day, it's, like, it's like going to be, like, a group thing. So, But California is my vote, so. Okay, that's where you guys want to work out and work out together. Yeah. I do want to ask you, if you're, if you're very honest with me, because I'm, I'm very curious, because you are one of these receivers, rare air, that you, you do okay with whoever's throwing you the ball. You really do. If you look at the numbers, you've caught passes from nine different quarterbacks. <laughs> it's freaking so crazy. Nine different quarterbacks over the course of your four seasons, and you're still top ten in the league in catches in that span. How much of a factor was Anthony Richardson in you wanting to return to Indy? Because they tagged you, but you could have fought that tag. You could have demanded a trade. You could have played out the tag, but you came to terms and wanted to be there. Absolutely. Like I want to start this off by saying that I've been fortunate that the Colts didn't just bring in anybody. Like We brought in a quality group of quarterbacks that helped me succeed to what I've done so far. Um, so like, I just want to credit like all of those guys, but um, I definitely was interested in coming back and playing with the same quarterback for two consecutive years. Right. Because um, so far that seemed like a dream, but now it's actually happening and I'm so excited and I'm so excited for uh, him and everything that we're going to do this year, like, it's going to be great. And it's just great to develop that continuity. Like, he knows who I am. Like, I know, like, just, like, I, like, know his strengths. And we can kind of hit the ground running instead of having to start from ground zero. So, so clearly, Anthony pay, played a big role. You having some some consistency. It's like I'm looking at you like it's like a dream scenario for you to have some consistency at quarterback, even though you've played with some great ones. Very well-polished answer there. Um but you guys came so close to the playoffs. And I want to ask you about your coach, because he got a lot of love down the stretch of the season for what he did in year one. What is it that, that you sort of noticed in the stretch of year one as far as growth with this uh, coach? Growth or chemistry? Yeah, I mean, like what stepped, what, what sort of evolved about him? Yeah, it's, it's um, what he does a great job of is he plays to his players' strengths. Um, so when so when Anthony went down uh, week three, we completely switched to a whole different offense because obviously Anthony and Gardner are different types of quarterbacks. And he really put everybody in position to be successful because um, hmm. because preseason, I think everybody gave us like four games to win, which was crazy disrespect. But <laughs> like just like it is like what it is. But um and, and, like, I just felt like, again, like, he did a really good job of putting us in the right position to uh, basically make the most of the situation that we were dealt. So, and then coming down to that last game of the year, I think that it was a great play call. We just didn't execute it, like, as players. Um, it wasn't any one person, but when you watch the film, the play was there, the first down was there, and, and we just couldn't get it done. But really, it shouldn't even have came down to that last play. But that's football. So. Uh, I feel like outside, you have a really good answer because I don't, nobody knows anything about your coach. Like outside yeah. of he had a good year, outside of like, of course, like he's been a great offensive coordinator. What do I need to know about him? What can you tell me about him? I would say the man loves ball. Like 
he's super intense and like that's the thing is like people probably don't know much about him because yeah. because he's he's only football like all the time so it's like like he doesn't like to like not that he doesn't like to do anything else he's just so focused like all the time like we went to um the um nba all-star weekend and oh yeah and and like he's just talking ball the whole time, and I'm like, Coach, like, let's just watch. Like, <laughs> let's just watch this NBA All Star. What do you game. mean? Like, what kind of ball? Like, is he literally like showing you new concepts and browsing? Oh that's, no! That's, what is he talking no. about? Um, he'll like talk about <laughs> concepts. He'll talk about Anthony. He'll talk about, hey, like I'm thinking about this year and what we're gonna do and and all this stuff I have like in my head. And like he's always going like this. Like he's always like using this. Always like that. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, he's just a super, super like awesome guy, and I'm very glad that he's our coach. So, um, I think he does a great job. You're like, dude, we're here. The three point contest is going on. Like, what? Like, yeah. I'm trying to have a good time, coach. Like, loosen up. Yeah. Um, you know, we have Zach Moss coming on the show right after you. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you going to miss him? Oh, let's bring on Zach before we say bye to you. Like, Zach, yeah. Oh, this is, yes. this is bad. <laughs> hey, buddy. So, What's up? So, actually, Zach, now that you're not a cult, I'm just going to take everything like from, like, your locker, like, all your drinks, like, all your... I'm going to take it all. <laughs> okay, before sure. before I let you guys go, I want... Because Minshew... Yeah, you already time, doing that. You're already on your way. Yeah, Zach, congrats on your... I mean, this, you two are just... They're two little happy little clams here in the offseason. Like, the deals are done. You're ready to start uh, it, it, for the rest of your careers, and you guys are figuring things out. I do want to ask you guys about Gardner Minshew. We're going to do that in the break, though. We're going to take a break, but we, we're live on YouTube. It's a whole thing you guys don't have to worry about. We will be back. Uh, we've got 